All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. And welcome back to another episode of Toxic Masculinity. Here I am with my cohort, there, Don the Predator Fry. And yours truly, Dan to be severed. We're here to entertain, offend, defend almost anybody and everybody. But rest assured, we will try to infuse you with a great deal of masculine to- toxicity here. And if they get your, uh, you know, get yourself butt hurt, well, put your bad panties back on, and because uh, that's what you're, you're you're in for the ride for. Today we have on uh, a legend in the uh, the mixed martial arts arena, actually submission grappling arena, uh, professional wrestling arena, and uh, and now making his mark in the the movies. And we got Shannon the Cannon Rich. Also, I, I should say, the uh, leading living competitor with the most. Uh, cage bouts. Is that, that did I say it correctly? No, nah, it's the, the person that's living that has yeah. most fights on record. Yeah, that's me. Okay. I didn't, right. Obviously, I didn't win them all, but there's a guy by the name of Travis Fulton. He's a he's a pedophiler and he's a dead. And you know what? That's good for him. Is I don't want dead? to talk about him. Is yeah, he man, he killed him. Good. He killed himself. You know, good. he Cheapy. he got a, he he got arrested for being a pedophile yeah, and. Uh, and uh, you know he he uh, he 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 uh, took the he went out the chicken out. shit way. Yeah, he took the easy way out, and he hung himself. So you know, good for him. He's dead, and yeah. uh, that puts that puts me at number one. Puts Mr. Dan player. Severn. Yeah, puts Mr. Dan the Beast at number two, and uh, we'll just go there. You know, it's all good. Yeah, the world's a better place without that piece of shit. Absolutely, Don. I like that little man cave you got there. You got all that Native American art there. You got some uh, some skulls on the wall. American yeah. flag. I dig it, man. That's yeah, that's my, pretty uh, badass. My John Wayne picture fell off, so we gotta f- fix the wire. <laughs> oh, looks good, man. I, I, I like John it. John Wayne be right here. Yeah. I, I oh, actually said I, we'd rather have had you in person, but it's kind of like go our our, our last uh, interview. <laughs> It went it went shorter than what we thought it was going to go. Uh, there was another person that we were hoping to get out. It's like going well now we're all out here like. Uh, who else can we try to get a hold of? I said, well, let me try Shannon. I might better reach him. You know, but maybe not. Just all the yeah, I, if, he's, if he's on the movie set or not. He might be in there getting no, picked up or whatever, you know? No, <laughs> not, on, not on the movie set today. I, I was at the range today, actually doing a bunch of shooting with uh, some 75th Ranger, uh, uh, Army Ranger guys. So, yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, just got back from Cabo San Lucas. Me and the wife went out there for a little vacation. And, um, yeah, what range hanging out, man. Been? Uh, we go out to a little range out here. It's a BLM private range out here in the desert. Um, it's near Cowtown, out by uh, North Glendale. Yeah, up in the up in the valley. Yeah. Is it? Does it have a name or is it a secret? No, it's just called a BLM range. It's out by <laughs> Table Mesa. I mean, it's it's really no no secret range. <laughs> it's good times though. We you know shooting ARs and uh, pistols out there, nine millimeter and forties. It's pretty fun. Well, well, let's let's, let's take people back to a much younger uh, Shannon. Well, before the pre-Canon type of uh, aspects right now, born and raised. Give give the people a bit more about your background. Where were you, where you born and raised originally? That uh, Shannon. I'm born and raised in a little small town. Don knows where it is. You know where it is. Uh, Coolidge, Arizona. Go Bears. Um, you know, a little town that's got good three stoplights. More or less like leave it to Beaverland. It was a little tiny fields. You know, a yeah, of- a lot of. <laughs> alfalfa fields cotton fields um literally i was i was seven miles outside of town on a in a two-bedroom trailer uh dirt roads uh nearest neighbor was like a mile away we boarded horses had 22 horses grew up on a farm uh and that's where uh the cannon you know, well, at that time that, i was the, i didn't I know you were that guy. culture Shit, you yeah know, man me. yeah i've been holding out yeah, boarding yeah, but- horses, grew up on a on a ran- a little ranch, and uh, that, at that time I was the BB gun. I didn't become the cannon until later. <laughs> <laughs> was was that was the movie uh, about the Red Rider BB gun at, at that? Yeah, it's still out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't shoot your eye out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then um, you know, I, mean, I, I the, just... the cool part there, Shannon. It go, again, it shows because a lot of people they know they only know about you once you've achieved some level of success. But yeah. they don't realize that a lot of people say, well, well, how did that person ever get there? That's what yeah, I ask well, questions like that because I want people to know you came from humble beginnings. Yeah, definitely. I was poor growing up. You know, mother, mom was uh, divorced uh, 
uh, raising two kids. Uh, she actually remarried later. I got a stepdad, but you know, it was definitely humble beginnings. You know, we'd go to the, uh, the church actually to go get food. You know, that was going out to dinner, having a mom take us out to the church, go get food. So, um, yeah, man, humble beginnings. I'm proud to be where I'm at today, but, um, you, you know, I'll, be, man. You should be. honestly, right. honestly, I, I, I owe everything to wrestling. You know, if, if anybody like, you know, I've been, I've been in the military and stuff, but the hardest thing I've ever done in life was wrestling practice. So I, I believe that in deep in my heart, that if you can make it through wrestling practice, you can literally do anything in the world. Uh, wrestled four years varsity out of Coolidge High School. Obviously, we're, you know, double A. We were no 5A school. We're a small school. But um, that wow. wrestling definitely instilled, uh, you know, dedication, discipline, and desire. And that is what prompted me to uh, become an MMA fighter. You know, I, watched, uh, I watched you guys actually fighting in the UFC, and that's what uh, wanted me to become an MMA fighter. Where did you get to, where did you get your first start? To like, would, would, like go jump into to Eva Bay. Where did you, where did you start to trade it at? That where did you, well, you know, obviously I was a wrestler and growing up in, uh, in Coolidge, it's near Mexico, obviously. And, uh, I was going to school up in Tempe and I saw these kids actually getting black eyes and I asked them, Hey, where did you get that black eye? You know, were you a bar fight? This and that. And they said, no, we were going out in Mexico. We we're fighting. I was like, what do you mean you're fighting? He said, yeah, we're getting paid to go down and fight at Plaza de Toros. And, um, you know, it's bare knuckle, no rules, anything goes, knockout or submission. Um, and that's really how I started doing MMA. I didn't even, you know, I just had a wrestling background, didn't even know how to box, just a wrestling background. Go to Mexico, fought down there in Plaza de Toro a few times. And uh, then I met a lady by the name of Becky Levi. And Becky is the one who got me to go to a fight out in Hawaii where you were actually headlining it. And um, we fought for, uh, TJ Chop, TJ Yeah, Chop, TJ Chop. Uh, yeah, yeah, Super Brawl. So we were out there fighting in Super Brawl. And that was the first time I ever fought in front of 10,000 fans at the Blaisdell Arena. Got paid to fight, and, and I was hooked after that. I was like, this is definitely what I want to do for a living. I mean, you can get paid to fight. And I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then, then I was a fighter, and then I started promoting my own events. I went into the military, and then I was at South Station in Fort Hood, Texas, and you know, fast forward a little bit. I uh, started promoting my own little shows. I actually brought Don Fry out there and yeah, you, uh, you actually Fajita's first fight too. Yeah. Fajita's first fight. You know, he was coming under the name of Saito and uh, you know, he was getting ready to fight Mark Kerr. So he needed to have some MMA fight. So he fought, um, he won a tournament and, um, and Dan, you came out to Fort Hood and saw me out there. And that's when you were doing your WWE uh, stint. And uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, and then I owe it all to, to Don there. Don Fry is the one who uh, called me up on my birthday, September 27th, and said, Shannon, you want to fight in Pride? And I said, well, yeah, uh, absolutely. He goes, all right, we're going to have you fight Sakuraba, main event, Pride 11. Kind of sounds like a little bit of a setup here now. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, at the time, you remember, nobody wanted to fight Sakuraba. Nobody. I mean, he had just beat five Gracies in a row. They were calling him the Gracie Killer, and Don's like, "You want to fight him?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, hell yeah, I want to fight him." So, I uh, went out there and uh, he got me an ankle lock in the first round. <laughs> but you know, showed up I, and fought. I think you know, I, I think I, I told you some of the backstory that I mean, maybe some of our listeners had never heard before. But uh, I first met Sakuraba when I was going over to Japan for the UWFI organization, mm -hmm. and he was just a young boy, aka green boy. I mean, two different terminologies to where. Uh, you know, the, the dojo was right there. Uh, the dojo trading facility kitchen. It was like a self-contained building. They had all, everything right there. And, uh, uh, with soccer would be like one of the green boys, young boys. I mean, he, he had to, he's there mopping the, the, the floors, cleaning up the facilities, but he's also there making the meals. The, the, Cause they always, we'd always do a good trading session and then, then we'd eat and he'd be there. He'd be traded. And, uh, uh, then he'd be over there, you know, cooking and peeling potatoes and do whatever, whatever else have you. But then the upper echelon, they would, they would come out of the shower. They'd come out of the shower and literally the green boys or young boys would have to simply towel them down. They did the, the, the guys would come out there. They basically do like a 360 and, the, and the, the, the young boys with their squeegee cloths and then dry them out up. And it's like going. It, it was in a, heaven, uh, huh, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was with the J Japanese organization right there. It's kind of like going, you know, uh, I'm not going to be squeegee down like, like this right now. It's like, but it just, 
but I, I, the whole purpose of even say this each time I would go back to about, about every other month, I was going back to Japan and, and uh, each time I go back, there would be like a new black eye on Sakuraba. There'd be a new cauliflower eater. They'd be new something new because they just beat the living tar out of him, you know, toughening him up in the process. And uh, yeah, they want to know you're not going to quit. They yeah. Wanna, they want to see how tough you can get. Yeah. And, and they, they went through a lot of people, but you know, each time I come back, I saw him there again. And I always try to give me those thumbs up, stuff like that. Cause he, yeah, their pressure line is not, I mean, they're really hard on the, the lower, the lower group. Don, Don, when you were wrestling in New Japan, did you see any of that with the young boys? No. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it. Uh, we, we go to the gym, like, like Dan's and they had a real nice gym, and, and then, you know, Right now, it's like a, the garage, you know, it was the gym, yeah. and then then it was being quarters and, and the kitchen. It was just nice, you know, it was, it was a nice setup over there. Yeah. But um, Brian Johnson and I were we were too having fun to pay attention to what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! So you missed those days or not? Yeah, I fucked off. I should have. I should have been more professional and should have paid attention. Yeah. Too busy. We, we we sort of skipped over your 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 military aspect there, Shad. I I want to go back back and just say, okay, let people know what branch of military that you were in and what you served, what you served for. Yeah, I um, you know, I I grew up and uh, I always wanted to be in the military, and then um, I went and worked at the prison over in Florence State Prison, and then I went into construction, and then. I had a bad divorce and I just wanted to go see the world, go travel. And I said, let's go join the army. Let's do that. So I ended up going to Fort Hood, Texas. I joined fourth ID, fourth infantry division, spent a couple of years in the army. When I got out of the army, I uh, ended up going to work for a security company in Iraq called Blackwater, private security contractor. And uh, how, much the, how much of the world did you get to see with the army? Just I didn't get to see anything, man. I saw Fort Hood, Texas, and I got I, I got I I went to Fort Hood, Texas. I went to NTC over at Fort Irwin, California. So I didn't get to see shit. So uh, man, lied, man, that was horrible. They you, yeah, bro. they lied to me. You know, I thought I was going to go to Germany. I thought I was going to go to you know all these places in the world, and you know it, it, it was crazy. Um, but then I got to spend some time in Iraq, working with some Tier One guys, Special Forces, uh, Delta guys, uh, Navy SEALs. Uh, got to work with a guy named Chris Peranto. Everybody knows him as Tonto. He was one of the survivors over in Benghazi. Him and I worked together in Iraq. Good, super good guy. Man, I met some lifelong friends that uh, I'll never forget. Obviously, um, spending time in Iraq that was uh, that was uh, that was a real eye opener for a guy who's coming from Coolidge, Arizona, with three stoplights to going over there and seeing a third world country. So that was uh, that was pretty cool. Wait a second, it looked just like Eloy. Yeah, it did a lot like Eloy. Yeah, <laughs> a lot like Eloy. Yeah. Uh, I know we're, we're kind of dished a little bit on the state of Arizona, but at the same token, I, I remember when I first came to the state of Arizona uh, back in 1976 as a freshman at Arizona State. I mean, I, I was kind of surprised at the level of competition that, that the wrestling was at, but over time it has continued to rise. And I, I, I literally, I, I credit a lot of that to the fact that uh, Bobby Douglas was a head wrestling coach and, and the people that kept graduating out from underneath him, they, they would end up being either head wrestling coaches at various high schools or sister wrestling coaches at various high schools, junior highs, uh, junior colleges. And over the course of, you know, 20, 30 years later, you know, it, it just keep kept evolving more and more and more to where, you know, I always see that the state of Arizona has a uh, more high level MMA competitors or people that have competed in either the UFC Pride, Bellator, a lot of these other organizations. Um, Arizona State University is probably the number one university in the United States when you look at guys that have competed through the Sunkiss Wrestling Program, Freestyle Greco, but then there's a great opportunity there. But then also that have gone on then to, to do stuff in uh, UFC uh, or the Olympics. Bellator. Yeah, on, on all on all levels. So I mean, it just there's a, a lot of things that the state of Arizona has to be proud of. And uh, you know, Zeke Jones is the, the head wrestling coach at Arizona State now. And yeah, but the MMA is your fault, Dan Severn. 
Well, no, 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 don't, 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 don't say that it, because all your so, fault. so many people oh, have, well, have contributed well, Don, to it. Don, it wasn't Dan because they were announcing Dan Severn from Coldwater, Michigan, but they were announcing <laughs> Don Predator Fry from Sarah Vista, Arizona. So, you know, everybody wanted to, to, to be like you guys, you know. Yeah, so you stand you stand, ever, you yeah. stand corrected there, Mr. Fry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, but ASU for wrestling has definitely put out a lot of guys, and even into the Olympics. You know, you got like Henry Sujudo went out, won the gold medal, and then he became a UFC champion. And um, you know, I, I, and obviously Arizona State would have lost that. The Olympics would have lost that without the guy Art Montori. Art Montori's put yeah. so much into the wrestling program. I mean, literally. Arizona needs to applaud Mr. Montori for even, you know, keeping it alive. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I always say that you know? he's, he's one of the big reasons why I came to Arizona State to be because I wanted the best of both worlds. I did not want to just wrestle in college. I wanted to know that when my college season would end, now I, I'm going to start my spring and summer program being involved in the freestyle Greco Roman so that the more times you get more matches, it seasons you that much more. Even though, yeah, right. each, each discipline, Folk style, freestyle, Greco, they differ a little bit, but it's still taking people down and put them up on their back, uh, you know, for, for getting the pinfall. So, you know, I, I look at it as, as overall, it's uh, it's uh, there's gen, uh, general characteristics there to it. But, uh, you know, I, I always credit uh, you know, Art for being one of the biggest influence there for me because I want yeah. the best of both worlds. Yeah, I, th I just think he doesn't get enough accolades. You know, a lot of people, they, they forget about where, uh, where the money comes from, or where the where the backups come from, is Art Montori. He's, he's opened up and helped he's, everybody. He's the, reason, he's the only reason the issue has wrestling still. Hey, well, even with the Olympics, I think the Olympics was going to shut down wrestling, and you know he jumped right. in and helped them he, out as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Art made a phone call. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you are exactly you're exactly right. I mean, he's been you very know. influential, but he's always also been kind of like that. That quite, he's not looking for the notoriety. He just, no, 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 no. That, I'm just saying that you know he his name he needs to come up. When you when you when right. he deserves it because a lot of people wouldn't be where they are without him. You know he was the one that helped everybody. Damn right. Uh, still, you know, and so, still, still continues so just, to this day. Yeah. So I just I just think you know we uh, me personally just try to give the guy some respect and you know let let other people maybe listeners that don't know about the the history of uh, um, some kids kids for example you know it was all him you know he's the one that made it happen for a lot of people. Yep. So yep. Don, let me ask you this: I, 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 you know, I see online that you went and got the uh, stem cell. Um, you know, uh, how did that turn out? It turned out great, you know. I mean, are you are you are you now walking without the walker? The, yeah, the yeah. everything. Yeah, good to go. Yeah, I, every once in a while, I'll I'll use uh, the back brace or the cane, but I'm having yeah. more, more good days than bad days, man. It's amazing. So. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.